Amen. Welcome to today's Monday Manna, the first Monday Manna in 2021. Happy New Year to you all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you, we honor you, we exalt you today. You are the God of our salvation, the God of our help, our hope, and our strength. You are the God of our lives. Hallelujah. You are the God of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord Most High. God of wonders beyond our galaxies, you are holy. You are holy. We honor you and bless you today. We give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I don't know if you've ever heard that song before, but that song is absolutely powerful. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, you are holy, amen. The universe declares your majesty, you are holy, you are holy. Amen. And he is just that. He is holy. Again, welcome to today's Monday Manna. We pray as always that we find you in good health and in good spirits. We pray also that Monday Manna will be a blessing to you to encourage your hope, your heart, your faith, your trust, and your confidence in God and in God alone. We're going to start a new series um, today. Amen. And we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God under the title of what did God say? What did God say? Amen. Numbers 23, 19 in the message Bible says this. It says, God is not man, one given to lies and not a son of man changing his mind. Does he speak and not do what he says? Does he promise and not come through? Amen. That's what the message Bible says. Let me read it to you out of the Amplified Bible. And then we'll go to the King James Version. Amen. Keep that in mind. What did God say? Numbers 23, 19 out of the Amplified Bible says, God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie, neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Amen. Again, what did God say? And out of the King James Version Numbers 23, 19 reads like this. Hallelujah. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The answer to both of those questions is yes. Yes, he has said it and he shall do it. And yes, he has spoken and he shall make it good. But often times like these can cause us to doubt that God will do whatever he has said. Times like these will cause us to look at the situation. And like we said last week, judge God based on those situations and circumstances rather than holding fast to the truth that if God said it, he will do it. And if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass that God is faithful. So I want to encourage your hearts to begin to expand even all the more. Amen. If you're a mighty faith warrior, you can always expand because our God is inexhaustible. Amen. And if you're just starting out, then you can begin, you know, um, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, amen, you have enough faith to believe whatever God has said to you. So I'm going to be sharing some scriptures with you in the weeks to come. Amen. That are going to um, cause your ears to hear what the spirit is saying. Amen. Not what your circumstances are saying, not what your finances are saying, not what your co-workers are saying, not what your not what your boss is saying. Now hear me with a spiritual ear, because you know we're supposed to, supposed to submit to our authorities. But when it comes to choosing between what God has said, everything else takes a side bar, okay? Everything else takes a side note compared to what God has said. Whatever God has said takes center stage. And so we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God. I'll share a scripture with you today. 
um, that you can look to. Hold on one moment. I'm using my phone, believe it or not. Um, I'm using my phone so I can easily uh, go from one place to another. Amen. So we're going to be talking about God's faithfulness. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2.13. 2 Timothy 2.13. And it says... Hold on, y'all. I'm going to go to the Bible gateway. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.13. It talks about God's faithfulness. Amen. And how that um, even if we don't believe, he cannot deny himself. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.13 says this. Let me keep on going up to uh, verse 11. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. God cannot deny himself. He abideth faithful to who he is. He abides faithful or remains faithful or dwells and lives in the fact that he is a faithful God, that he keeps his word, that whatsoever he has said, it shall surely come to pass, even as he has said that it shall come to pass. It is God that puts his word in the mouth of his people prophets who declare what the Lord has said and that word is a word to live by and that word shall surely come to pass because God cannot deny himself. He is faithful to who he is. And aren't you glad? Because if he ever decided to change his mind on Tuesday and change his mind again on Thursday, and then when Sunday comes, here he goes again, changing his mind, then you know that he can't be relied upon, that he's not dependable, that one day if you catch him in one mood, you might get one answer. If you catch him in another mood, you might get another answer. But answer, but aren't you glad that the God of our salvation is like is not like that? That he's not shifting like shifting sand. Amen. That he doesn't move like the clouds. He doesn't shift and change his mind like the clouds. That he is steadfast and he's unmovable. He says what he means and he means what he says. Amen. And depending on which side you're leaning on, that, that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. But the fact of the matter is God can be relied upon. He can be depended upon. Amen. He can be trusted. Amen. Whatever he has said, it shall surely, surely, surely come to pass. And so we can rely upon him and the word that he speaks. In Matthew chapter 4, hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 4, the scripture says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered, meaning Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Meaning, you don't just get, um, we don't just live off of natural sustenance, natural substance, which would represent the bread. Amen earthly things, but we abide because of the word of God and the word of God. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so those words provide life for us. Amen. Spiritual life and they sustain our natural life. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about the words that are coming out of God's mouth. Amen. 
We're going to be talking about the faithfulness of God. We're going to be sharing some examples of those who trusted in God's faithfulness. Amen. We're going to be talking about just a whole slew of things of whereby our faith and our hope and our trust and confidence rest in God and in God alone. Let's go to one more scripture. First Corinthians chapter two. First Corinthians chapter two. Amen. This is Paul speaking by the Spirit. Amen. He's talking about how he came to them, um, not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto them the testimony of God. Paul was a very learned man. He was a schooled man. He was an educated man. Amen. In the ways of the Pharisees, he understood the law in and out. Amen. He was circumcised on the eighth day. I mean, he had this great resume that he could lean to if he wanted to, but he decided to count all of that dung that he might know the excellency of Christ. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, not as though I couldn't, I just chose not to, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I didn't want to know your doctrines. I didn't want to know your, your uh, philosophies, vain philosophies. Amen. I wanted to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much, much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Why? Why demonstration of the spirit and of power? Why? Because he says in verse five, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And you say, well, what is that power? Well, Romans tells us what that power is. Amen. Romans chapter one, verse 16 tells us, um, as Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we, with these scriptures, understand that the power of God is the word of God. Amen. And Jesus said in Matthew, it is written in Matthew that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we're going to be talking about this faithful word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. As we go through, um, as we go through examples that have been set before us in the scriptures, amen, where God said one thing and then God did exactly what he said he was going to do. Why? So that your hope, your faith, your trust, your confidence will be in the true and living God and in him alone. I hope you take this ride with me. Amen. I am excited. Get your hot coffee or get your hot tea. Amen. I was going to say hot toddy, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take nobody to that place. Amen. Get, get your glass of sparkling cider. Amen. Your hot chocolate, whatever it is, grab that thing, that comforting drink and sit down with me when Monday manna is posted. And let's talk about and go through the word of the living God, because if God said it, then God is going to do it. Amen. May God richly bless you this coming week. May he keep you. May he show you his faithfulness because faithful is he who has called you. This is Evangelist Hutchinson with Open Door Ministries here in Clarksville, Tennessee. Amen. Wishing that you have a bountiful, beautiful, and blessed day in the Lord. In Jesus name. Amen.